Hi everyone, welcome to this session on Ballerina, an open source cloud native programming language. So we have seen cloud native technologies being used to create scalable applications. So uh, we generally use them uh, as a set of uh, tools, libraries, frameworks uh, that are used uh, on top of existing program languages uh, to make them cloud native ready. So they can be used to write microservices to get these uh, features retrofitted to these languages. So uh, what we have tried to do with Ballerina is to create a program language uh, from ground up uh, by having these concepts of cloud nativeness inbuilt to the language itself. So basically it's a language that is agile and network aware. So uh, the Ballerina language knows about network endpoints. It knows about how the network works, how to do resilient communication and so on. So the idea of this uh, language is to create an additional abstraction layer uh, of understanding the network to make the life of the developer much more easier uh, in doing cloud native development. So um, in this presentation, I'll be going through some of the major features of the language and I'll be doing some hands-on uh, demonstrations on how the code looks like and uh, how things work. Uh, so let's get right into uh, some samples. Uh, so before that, uh, so another aspect is uh, Barna is a batteries included platform. So um, it has built in support for most of the prominent technologies we use, like starting from uh, data type supports like XML, JSON, to uh, transports like gRPC, NATS, uh, and built-in observability features and so on. So those are all built into the, uh, the language and the platform. So you don't have to worry about having an uh, other, uh, finding external libraries to get uh, uh, like uh, the most general things done. So let's look at a hello world scenario from Ballerina. So it's actually a hello world service that we are going to write. So we are going to have like a, a simple Ballerina service which will respond to HTTP GET. So let's see how that is done. So I'm going to use VS Code uh, for my demos. So there's a Ballerina VS Code plugin that you can use. Uh, so if you go to the VS Code Marketplace, the Banner plugin is there. You can just directly install it from uh, that place. So here I'm just going to create a new file for demo.bal. So bal is the uh, source file extension for Barana code. So here let's create a HTTP service. So the plugin contains some shortcuts to create often use templates like here I have directly created a service and as you can see here so in Ballerina we have a first class cons construct for services so a service can be an HTTP service gRPC a messaging service and so on so the type of the service depends on the type of HTTP listener that it's bound to so here we have an HTTP listener defined here so then this becomes an HTTP service. So let's call our service, hello. And these resource functions are the actual functionalities that are there in the service. So here a resource function can be bound to a certain uh, subcontext of my HTTP service. So I'm going to say, okay, hi. And I can also give uh, things like the base part for the service. So I can say here, okay, this is mapped to the root context. Uh, so here we are just going to send a response back to the caller. I'm just going to say hello world. Some housekeeping tasks to do error handling here. So that's it. So this is our service. 
So then let's run it and see. So when you say burner run command, uh, the source file, it will build and run our program at once. So here our service is up and running. Now we can send it, it an HTTP request and see the response. So our base path is from the root and the other subcontext by default maps to the function name. So you can say hi. So yes, so you can see we got the response back. So that's a simple HTTP service using Ballerina. So then we can um, modify its behavior as well. So we already saw the use of annotation earlier when we gave it the base path. So we can do other things like we can restrict it only for post requests. You can say, It will only handle post. So that should be added to the resource. You can say, okay, I only handle post uh, requests here. And here, let's actually extract the payload that is sent to the service you can use the request object and say give me the text payload and okay, we have to say and afterwards we'll just echo back that uh, uh, payload data to the user. So we'll say, use a string template here, and give the variable name. So that's it for our service update. Let's run this and see. And in this case, we are going to send some payload as well. So this will be a, a post request. And you can see here, we got the response back with the payload we gave. So it says, Gave Jack, so it said hello Jack, and so on. So that's like the simple way of handling uh, services in Ballerina. And uh, let's go to the next section of uh, using connectors. So um, uh, we'll uh, do a extended uh, uh, demonstration of the code we have by using some connectors. So. As I mentioned in Ballerina, so it has some explicit knowledge on the network operations that we do, um, uh, like the network, uh, uh, for example, the HTTP post, uh, get, and so on. Uh, those are modeled as special operations in the language. So for example, when we say call a respond, we call it a um, uh, uh, remote uh, method invocation. So it has a special syntax for it as well, this error notation. Then the, uh, the runtime knows that we're actually doing a network call uh, from the language. So uh, this, this information can be used to uh, do certain optimizations uh, in network communication um, and also other aspects such as automatic observability and so on uh, that I'll uh, show later as well. So here I'm going to use some uh, connectors uh, with our Berna service. So here, uh, there's a simple scenario where I'm going to use an Amazon service, uh, the Amazon recognition service to do some uh, image analysis and, and return that uh, response back to the client. So let's see how 
we can do that so let's so actually it's going to be like a ocr operation so let's name our service ocr service so we are going to do some processing and so for this we are going to import a a, a module for the client uh, where the client is at for the amazon recognition service so it's called amazon recognition okay so the first thing we have to do is create the configuration for this so we just can just create the attributes and the required ones are the access key and the secret key so here i'm just going to use uh, baronas config api to read in these values so that can be read from a configuration file or from environment variables so here i actually have uh, my api keys and the secret uh, the key and the secret values in a file here in core banana cons uh, so i'm going to read from that so i have two properties called ak and sk So now my configuration is initialized. So then the next part is creating the actual client. So now we have the client ready as well. So then for the client, what we have to send is uh, the binary payload that is sent to this uh, resource function. Uh, so the first thing is let's extract the binary payload. Can say okay, binary payload, and this is available here. Then we call the necessary uh, remote method invocation, so call detect text by giving the payload. Then we get the message. Uh, from the detect text. And we'll directly send it out uh, to the client. So we do a respond with the message. So that's it um, for that. Uh, that's the full implementation. And um, let's run this and see. Okay, now the service is up and running. We'll send it an image. So this is the image we are going to send. And the expectation is this text would be uh, examined from that remote service and we'll get the text. The, the text uh, payload back. So this is the curl command we have to use. So we are sending the binary payload from a curl command. And yes, so you can see here, we got the text response back uh, from our backend service. So we can see here uh, from the client to our banner service, we do the remote method uh, invocation and we send it back. And as I said, uh, so the banner knows about these network endpoints and these are used uh, in, various, uh, in various aspects of the language for certain optim optimizations. And also uh, another unique part is uh, this can be used uh, for visualizing our code um, uh, as sequence diagrams. So the Barana language is um, uh, from bottom up designed in order to be uh, compatible with a, a, a sequence diagram concept. So all the code we write here are by default one to one mappable uh, to a sequence diagram. So in, uh, in the VS code, so we can, if we create the, uh, click this icon, it automatically give you the 
um, sequence diagram view of the code you have just written. As you can see here, uh, it uh, contains all the actors the, uh, and the remote uh, endpoints uh, in their own uh, lifeline. So when you do a remote invocation like the detect text uh, remote method invocation, it's uh, sent as a, uh, a, a remote message uh, between these lifelines. So you can clearly see the interactions between uh, the actors that are there in the system. So especially when you have a complicated scenario, it's very easy to uh, see what's happening. So uh, for example, I'll quickly modify this to have some uh, uh, conditional branches as well. So I'll just do this error handling explicitly. Let's say if there is my array, You can see here, uh, you can see, clearly see from the if statement, these are the different branches here and so on. So it's uh, in a high level, you can uh, very easily understand the code that you have written. So uh, it becomes self-documenting code uh, with, this, uh, with this mapping. So it will be like that. And we'll quickly go through some other uh, prominent features of the language as well. So starting from uh, concurrency. Uh, in Ballerina, so we have a, a unique concurrency model um, based on something called uh, strands. Uh, strand is like a lightweight thread uh, uh, construct uh, in Ballerina. And a worker is basically uh, uh, the realization of a strand. So in a, in a specific function, we can have multiple workers for uh, specifying uh, uh, concurrent executions. And also uh, uh, communication between these workers are done using message passing. So as you can see here, uh, we can say certain, we can define certain uh, data uh, variables here and say, send this to the other worker and so on. And uh, from the compiler, we um, automatically check uh, these interactions. We validate them in order to make sure that uh, they don't uh, result in deadlocks or anything like that. And if you find uh, that these interactions are not compatible, we give a compiler saying um, uh, that uh, this should be fixed. And uh, as you can see here from the sequence diagram also, we clearly show how the message interactions are done with the multiple workers that are executing parallelly. <clears throat> also, um, we uh, support futures as well, so we can get any um, uh, function and make it run asynchronously. So we can use the start keyword and we can run that and we get a future construct back, uh, which represents the uh, the future value we'll be getting. Uh, so then we can later on wait on the future to um, uh, finish uh, the synchronous operation from executing and get the value. Uh, so in that way, we can model uh, our operations uh, in that manner as well. And also that something that ties in with the concurrency model is also uh, the input output subsystem. So here uh, in Barina, everything uh, happens in an in a an, uh, non-blocking manner, uh, the IO operations. So uh, we do that in a transparent manner where in our code, uh, uh, the coding style will actually look like a blocking code uh, call when we do calls like from our HTTP client, when we, if we do like a get, uh, get request, um, to a remote endpoint. Um, so this looks like a typical blocking call, but what happens uh, in Ballerina is um, in our runtime, um, we uh, automatically suspend the execution strand, that's the execution context, and we give the processing of the IO operation 
to the operating system. And only when that IO operation is done, we resume our strand. So no um, operating system level threads are blocked in that manner. So those are immediately released when we do those kind of operations. And only when it's uh, when our IO operation is done, they resume uh, with the with a with a physical thread. So this uh, so in other typical programming languages, we have to handle this on our own by using uh, other callback mechanisms and so on. But here we ha we have uh, done that in the language itself uh, in the runtime, and uh, so in that way, so the users get a familiar programming model to use uh, to use uh, these uh, non-blocking IO features as well. So then uh, let's move into uh, like the Docker community support we have uh, in Ballerina. So uh, in the in the cloud native um, uh, programming uh, uh, concepts, so um, containerization is uh, is critical, and with that we need um, container orchestration as well. So Docker and Kubernetes are uh, leading technologies that. Uh, that are used for those things. Uh, so um, naturally, Barina also has uh, inbuilt support for these technologies. So basically, uh, we can take one of our services and uh, automatically make it compatible uh, with the container deployment and in a deployment like Kubernetes. So let's see how we can con uh, convert our earlier scenario to be able to uh, deploy in uh, Kubernetes as well. So, um, so we had to do uh, some minor uh, changes to the code here. So uh, we are not changing the business logic, of course. So we are just going to annotate uh, our service saying, okay, uh, deploy these uh, in a Kubernetes environment. So we first do this by saying, by adding a Kubernetes deployment annotation. Sorry. And also uh, we have to say, okay, uh, expose this as a Kubernetes service as well. And we can give other uh, parameters like the service type and so on. So you can give like, uh, it is exposed as node port or load balancer and so on. And uh, we can also give other uh, extended uh, information like um, we can say a config map. Uh, like for example, we'll need uh, that here because we are passing in uh, external configuration properties uh, for our services. So here I'm going to give my configuration file as a config map. And um, so these are the, uh, basically the, the annotations we'll need in order to deploy this in, uh, in Kubernetes. So let's see uh, how this is done. So now we just have to go and do a Balna build on the source file. So this is the so here we are just doing the build step rather than doing a run where we just build and run at the same time. So what happens is in this time, the compiler sees that we have these annotations. Oops. Okay. So here the compiler will see that I have these Kubernetes annotations and it engages a compile extension to work on these aspects. So what it'll do is it will automatically create things like the Docker image and also Kubernetes artifacts and provides us with a, with the final command that we had to uh, execute in order to deploy this in Kubernetes. So let me run that. Okay, so we can see uh, now the 
uh, our artifacts are deployed uh, using the Kubernetes, uh, using the, Kubernetes uh, the config. So we can check that by doing a kubectl get pods. You can see the pod is deployed and you can check for our service as well. And you can see here, our service is also deployed and we should be able to contact it through here. So let's do a curl request for that as well. Okay, the port is 32. Six three. And now the request is going uh, through the uh, Kuni setup and we can see we got the response back as well. So now we basically used uh, the Kubernetes service that's uh, exposed to uh, NordPort and we sent a request and we got the uh, response back. So basically in the same way, you can deploy to any Kubernetes cluster as well, like uh, any hosted solution like in uh, uh, AWS, uh, Azure Cloud, uh, and so on. So it's just a matter of uh, pointing your kubectl, the kube config, and uh, it'll be the same commands that you have to uh, used to deploy the application. So let's go to the uh, next section. Um, that's, uh, so I'll quickly go through some of the serverless uh, features also we have in Ballerina, uh, starting from AWS Lambda. So uh, in the same way as we did the uh, Kubernetes deployment, it's just a matter of uh, annotating uh, a Balina function and and will uh, the compiler will automatically generate the required artifacts to, uh, to do the deployments. So uh, I'll quickly show an example of that. Uh, so I already have a function, a simple one, where I'm generating a UUID and returning it. And here also, if you just do a burn up build, um, the compiler understands that I have annotated it saying it's an AWS Lambda function. And it creates the required, the zip file. And I can just deploy that using the AWS CLI commands. So here there's the command is uh, given here with some placeholder variable names that I should use for the functions. So if you have multiple functions, those will be listed here as well, so other ones. So here I only have one. So I'll just say UUID. And I'll just make sure the function is not there anymore. Okay, so let's try this, oops. set that value, so let me set my lambda roll AR in as well. And also my region. 
Okay, now we have all the parameters required. This should, should be able to deploy the function now. Okay, now the function is deployed. Let's try to do an invoke from the CLI itself. Okay, the execution is successful. Let's see the payload and you can see here, we got the response out. Let's do that in a single command. So we can see here, these are separate invocations of the Lambda functions we just deployed. So uh, in that way you can, um, uh, create lambdas in this way, uh, like easily using uh, ballerina, so you don't have to worry about another extra build step uh, on packaging these artifacts and so on. That's automatically done by the comp compiler itself. And um, so let's go to the next one. So in the same way, uh, we have uh, uh, support for uh, Azure functions as well. Uh, so in a similar manner, uh, an annotation based approach is there uh, when you want to define uh, those type of uh, serverless functions as well. So here I have a, a, a specific scenario that I have created uh, in, uh, using Azure functions. Uh, so it's a, a scalable uh, data processing scenario again with some uh, processing of images where uh, we take in requests uh, through an HTTP request and uh, uh, we take in the, the binary data and an email address and we submit that to a, a, a blob storage in Azure and also uh, we queue those requests and using serverless functions, uh, we process the images, we put it to other queues and we publish them using email. So. Um, so using of these uh, intermediate queues and these other storage mechanisms is used to scale the system. Um, so uh, we'll just show you how uh, how we can how easily we can uh, model this scenario uh, using a serverless scenario uh, with Ballerina. So this is basically the code that is required to do that. So uh, using Azure uh, Functions um, bindings uh, concept. Um, so input output bindings, we can uh, nicely uh, chain uh, these uh, requests through multiple stages. So we can create a workflow uh, using this feature. So in Barina, so we can say uh, uh, through a specific HTTP trigger, we are invoking this function and we can uh, bind certain parameters to uh, storage um, uh, options like queues, blob storage and so on just by setting values uh, in the code. So we don't have to worry about uh, specific uh, service clients being initialized here. So don't need to worry about the credentials and everything, the API keys, but rather they are automatically handled through the system itself. So in this way, we can, uh, as I said, wire these functions together. So we can say we are setting a specific uh, value in a queue uh, in this function and it's directly bound to a, uh, another function where that function is into a, uh, to that queue from here. So in this way, it's by, it's, these two are connected and from our, at the last end, again, uh, the results are sent uh, to another serverless function here by sending an email. So likewise, it's can very convenient model these operations using this mechanism. And Barana makes it easier uh, because it does all the uh, build steps, the deployment. Uh, so um, just by building it, it will be, you will be presented with the deployment artifacts. Then you can use the uh, CLI commands or any other deployment mechanisms to uh, deploy it straight to uh, the Azure Functions environment. And also another uh, aspect of uh, Cloud Native and Microsoft development is uh, continuous integration and continuous development. Um, 
so you can use many systems so that um, like Jenkins, um, Codefresh, and so on. And also we have uh, support for GitHub Actions as well. So there's a Balina GitHub Action that is available. You can you to directly uh, build, test uh, Balina applications and directly deploy it to an environment. Um, like maybe a Kubernetes cluster, uh, a serverless environment or anything like that. Uh, so that can be done using the GitHub functions uh, features we have as well. And also another uh, critical feature we have uh, is in Barina is the built-in observability. Uh, so um, uh, basically in any code we write, uh, especially when it comes to network uh, and points, um, the system can automatically observe the operations that you do, and it can generate metrics and uh, tracing information uh, based on those operations. So that's where operations such as the remote method of invocation and so on are automatically tracked because we know they are network operations, and that can be used for the observability features, uh, the functionality. So we'll uh, let's quickly do. Um, uh, 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 tracking of uh, our earlier scenario used by enabling observability on it. So it's just a matter of uh, enabling observability uh, when we are running it. So we can globally say enable observability for the full uh, application. So by giving this runtime switch, we can say better run and say better observe enabled is true. And when you do that, um, it starts an internal endpoint for uh, uh, for exposing uh, metrics using uh, for Prometheus. So a Prometheus uh, server can connect to this endpoint and pull uh, metrics information. And also it uh, starts up publishers for um, Tracers based on the Open Open API uh, standard. Uh, sorry, op Open Tracing uh, API, uh, rather. Uh, so uh, here, by default, um, uh, we have we are shipping a Jaeger client, uh, so you can directly connect to that uh, to send uh, tracing information. And so here, let's start up. Um, uh, a Prometheus server, a Jaeger, and also a Grafana for uh, uh, visualizing our uh, metrics information. So for this scenario, I'm going to start these servers using Docker. So um, that's just the easiest way to get things up and running quickly. So I have the Docker commands here. So starting from Prometheus, Grafana, and Jaeger. And let's send some requests just to populate uh, the metric stores and the tracing information. So now let's start up Grafana. The first thing is to add the data source. So it will be a Prometheus endpoint. Okay, we added the data source. Then we import the uh, dashboard. So there's a default uh, Barana dashboard that, we, uh, that is already available with the default uh, dashboards. And right away we'll be, we are seeing the stats from the requests that were already sent. And we get information like the HTTP service metrics, uh, the request per minute, uh, the rates, the error rates, uh, and so on. And we have many graphs to see the service status and so on. And also same is available for HTTP client metrics as well. And also other things such as uh, when you have database operations like SQL client metrics uh, and so on. So 
obviously these uh, uh, dashboards can be updated as well. So these are the default ones you will be getting. So then let's uh, move on to uh, the tracing view as well. So that's in uh, Jaeger. So here we have our service, OCR service. So when you say find tracer, so it has the two requests we sent. And we see the tracing information, uh, the, the spans uh, that were collected. So here there's only one uh, service and it should, we can drill down to multiple aspects, uh, the operations that were executed in that. So we can say starting from the uh, detect text remote method and the internal HTTP clients that were used, the post request and so on. So obviously when you have multiple services, it will show you the connections between the multiple services uh, where it, uh, uh, tracks all the hops through the network uh, through like correlation ID that's shared among uh, shared through the uh, single uh, round trip request. Um, so in that way you can uh, drill down into what's happening in the network, the request. Uh, so especially useful when you are um, uh, debugging your system or um, doing performance improvements. Um, so basically, that's how you get the uh, the uh, default um, out of the box observability in Ballerina. So it tracks all the default um, operations. So like ninety five percent of the time, that will be enough for the general cases uh, where all the network operations and uh, other uh, actions are by default monitored. Uh, and of course, when you have some custom enrichment to be done, you can use the uh, observability use API to add some additional events or uh, add more properties as well. So these are screenshot of when we have multiple services running the system, like how uh, the tracing UI would be. So this is what we saw with Prometheus and Grafana. And also, um, so um, Barna supports uh, open API as well. Uh, so that's a uh, Swagger uh, standard that uh, 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 it was called Swagger earlier, basically. So it's now open API. So that can be used to um, define services in Ballerina. So starting from a Swagger to create uh, uh, Ballerina service skeletons and stubs, and also for, for creating clients as well. So using the command line CLI, you can uh, uh, create this, so invoke these operations. So um, and then for, uh, if you want to learn more about Ballerina, so uh, in the Ballerina by uh, Ballerina IO website, so we have a Ballerina by example page where it uh, goes, through, uh, goes through the prominent language features uh, through multiple examples. So you can run them and learn how they, they are work. So they are commended examples uh, step by step. Uh, that's a quick way of uh, getting the hang of the language. Um, so Ballerina is uh, very similar to like, uh, 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 syntax is similar to languages like uh, C, C++, Java. Uh, so that type of a uh, syntax is there. So it's, it'll be familiar to most of the people who have used uh, similar languages. Uh, other specialized uh, concepts you can uh, learn through the resources that are there in the website. And also, um, uh, for beginners for program uh, who beginners who are uh, new to programming uh, uh, so we have written a book as well so uh, myself and my colleague Lakmal, we uh, wrote a book where how you can uh, learn programming using ballerina so anyone who are total newcomers to uh, programming can check out this book as well uh, that uh, use a new approach to uh, teaching programming using the Ballerina language. And um, of course, this uh, is an open source um, uh, project. Uh, so the full code is there in GitHub uh, and it's licensed under uh, Apache 2, the compiler and the runtime uh, basically. And um, you can contribute uh, with ideas, um, with code as well uh, in any area. 
and uh, you can uh, get into the conversation using Stack Overflow. You can ask questions, and also um, our main point of interaction is through the Stack Channel. So um, you can go and uh, join that as well. Uh, and uh, any any feedback would be uh, is uh, uh, is basically welcome and much appreciated. So um, also uh, the demos I used, the demo code, you can find it here in my GitHub repo uh, for the AWS demo scenario and also the Azure, the server scenario, you can find the full code here and how to deploy them with the instructions. Uh, so you can uh, uh, deploy it on your own and check it out. Um, so that is it for my session. Um, Thank you for listening. Um, if there are any questions, I can uh, take them now. Thank you.